That was the dumbest thing that they could have done because once the Democrats saw it and the Democrats for once in their lives got their shit together fast and they were like, oh, okay, in with the out with the old in with the new. Dr. Phil recently appeared on Bill Maher's Club Random podcast where things got pretty intense. Dr. Phil didn't just challenge Maher. He also took aim at the broader woke left, making some sharp criticisms that left Maher visibly frustrated. Throughout the conversation, Maher pushed back, but you could tell he was struggling to keep up with some of Dr. Phil's points about Democrats in the direction of the left. In this clip, we'll break down the key moments from their exchange and dive into what Dr. Phil had to say about the state of today's politics. Let's take a closer look at how the conversation unfolded and what set Maher off. Do you want me to set party? it up? Is there, yes, I'd love to. You should talk to John Fetterman. Is there a Democratic Party? Or has it been hijacked by the, the extreme left? Is there still a Democratic Party? Because let me tell you, I, I always... say the exact same thing, and it's not even a question. The Republican Party has been hijacked by the, not even the extreme right, by Trumpism which isn't even right. I mean, a lot of it is like just it's just a cult about one guy. Uh, I wouldn't call it right to be so loving of Russia. Russia? Republicans love Russia now. They're always sucking Russia's dick on Fox News. That isn't right wing. That's crazy because they're the leader of their party is crazy. If the, the, the Democratic Party of 20, 30 years ago is not like the Democratic Party today. Either is the Republican. I, 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 yeah, was, that, right. I was going to say that next. No, it's I agree. No, I agree. Yes. Because I, I truly am but, apolitical. I vote for people but, and policies, not parties. But if I had to describe okay. myself historically, I would say I've always been a social Democrat and a financial Republican. Do you ever have a Jewish girlfriend? <laughs> you were very pro-Israel there a minute ago. I, no, I don't think so. No? But I've... Like I say, I've been the same woman 50 plus years. Right. So it's been a long time. Okay. Jewish mistress? <laughs> that was a loaded question. I, <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't think so. Very clear no. I know. Very clear no. But I, I'm, just, I, I'm just saying we've got to do something here that independent of who gets elected president, this country's got to wake up and start being more self-determining. Dr. Phil made a strong point during his appearance on Club Random by asking Bill Maher whether the Democratic Party still exists as we know it, or if it's been taken over by what he calls the woke left. Dr. Phil framed it that way, not only because it's a straightforward label, but also because he knows it gets under the skin of those it's directed at, a bit of a win-win in his words. What's really interesting, though, is how Maher responded. Instead of engaging with the question directly, he immediately went on the defensive, shifting the conversation to the Republican Party. Maher didn't address Dr. Phil's concerns about extremists on the left. Instead, he started talking about how the GOP has been hijacked by far-right factions and Trumpism. Maher's reaction says a lot. It seems he couldn't even entertain the idea that the left might have its own problems without deflecting to the right. This kind of reaction highlights how difficult it's become for some people to criticize their own side, even when the topic is raised in good faith. Dr. Phil was just trying to have a conversation about the growing influence of extreme voices within the left, but Mahar's response was pure defense mode, which speaks volumes about the state of discourse. ...on who's in office, and if you've got idiots out there that aren't putting America first, we got to kick their ass to the curb. It's just, I don't care if Republican or Democrat, we got to kick their ass to the curb. We can't have those people contaminating and poisoning yeah, but, but, the ideology. But see, the Democratic Party is better at self-correcting. Like Kamala, her speech at the convention was very pro-American. I mean, if you told me that Kamala Harris would be the presidential candidate six months ago and that I accepted that and then said, okay, and she's going to use the word privilege in her acceptance speech. I would have thought it would have been about white privilege and all that bullshit that they're always on about. Not that it's all bullshit, but it bugs me. I mean, they just go overboard. 
But that's not what her speech was about. She said it's a privilege to be an American, which is music to my ears. Well, like, that's what she... that party needs to hear. Bill Maher made a valid point that the Democratic Party needs to hear. While I don't follow Kamala Harris's speeches closely or know the exact context, Maher's criticism touches on something important. The Democratic Party at times seems to seize every opportunity to engage in actions that can be perceived as anti-American. From kneeling during the national anthem to protests where American flags are burned, it's often progressive voices or the woke left that take these stances. While activism and criticism are part of democracy, there's no denying that these actions often alienate people who view them as unpatriotic. Maher's comment highlights the struggle within the left to balance legitimate critiques of America's flaws with maintaining a sense of pride in the nation's history. There's also a growing tendency within progressive spaces to erase or rewrite history, whether by tearing down statues or renaming schools. Dr. Phil has talked about this a lot, emphasizing that while America's history isn't perfect, slavery, for example, being a dark stain, it's important to recognize that every country has a complicated past. Compared to the formation of many other nations, America's history is relatively tame, yet there seems to be an overwhelming desire among some on the left to reject it entirely. Maher's critique points to this discomfort with American history and identity. While acknowledging flaws is crucial, embracing the country's progress and achievements matters too. His frustration reflects the idea that patriotism shouldn't be incompatible with constructive criticism. And that's something the Democratic Party would do well to consider. About that speech, do you? I don't know. What politician writes their own speech? Maybe Obama. But uh, who gives a shit? She said it. That's what matters. She said it. She gets it. And she's, and, and by the way, immigrants, immigrants get that. She's from immigrant stock. They get that. This is, you're lucky to be here because you could be there where you walked a thousand miles to get away from. That's one reason why they don't turn on Trump in the way the Democrats would like them to. Trump, Trump's popularity keeps going up with immigrants because when he says things like uh, rapists, yeah, that's out of line, but it, it, they, they come from shithole countries. Shit. They're like, fucking right we came from a shithole country. Why do you think we swam here? through shark-infested waters or whatever the fuck they did. We did it because we came from a shithole country. This man speaks the truth. And now we're not in a shithole country. And, you know, I mean, there are more inspiring slogans than we're not a shithole country, but, I mean... That's a start. It's if you're enjoying this content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out a ton. Now let's jump back into the video. To start... And there is too much about this country that does resemble a third world country, not least of which is a wannabe autocrat who does not believe in conceding elections, certainly a mark of a third world country. But, you know, in general, the America is good, especially compared to the way the rest of the world acts. Uh, I feel like the Democrats have gotten back on that message. They're back on that page. Whereas the Republicans, to your point about, like, don't change. Okay, uh, everybody at the Democratic convention who spoke was part of the tradition of the Democratic Center. Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Obama. The Republicans had nobody pre-Trump. George Bush, no Mitt Romney, nobody representing McCain. It's like that Republican Party didn't exist before Trump because they're not on board with the cult leader. So there is a difference. What do you think America is going to do when they f have time to figure out all of the people that lied about Biden's condition? All the people around him that lied about his condition. I mean, I kept doing jokes about it and people would say to me and They'd stop me in restaurants and say, Bill, stop doing those jokes about Biden. You're helping Trump. And I'd be like, right, like no one would notice otherwise. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I'm the guy who <laughs> spilled the beans about Biden being old. Oh, that's the last thing that helped Trump because it made him run against somebody else. It's amazing how well this turned out for the Democrats. I mean, if they hadn't had the early debate, Biden would be the candidate. 
the fact that they had that debate, which never happened before. Nobody ever had a debate in June. That was the dumbest thing that they could have done because once the Democrats saw it and the Democrats, for once in their lives, got their shit together fast and they were like, oh, Okay, in with the out with the old in with the new. I don't get why it took that debate for some people to panic about Joe Biden's performance. He performed exactly how I expected. Even without following him closely, anyone who's seen clips of him over the past few years could have predicted it. So it's hard to believe that Democrats were genuinely surprised by how he performed. Honestly, I think they knew what they were doing from the start. It's possible they set up that early debate knowing full well it would go poorly for him. Maybe even hoping it would. It feels like they were setting the stage for his failure, giving themselves an excuse to push him out. That way, when Biden stumbled, the general public, the normies, would jump on the bandwagon, laughing and pointing out how out of touch he seemed. And with that public reaction, the party would have the justification they needed to move on from him. It's just a theory, but it wouldn't be surprising if they had this planned all along. It feels like they wanted to clear the way for someone else, and that debate gave them the perfect opportunity to do it. Nothing. Nothing. Going on with my show and making jokes at his expense every week. And that's why this is a great country. Because as crazy as he is, he, you know, he didn't do anything about it the first time. Wait. Is Bill Maher really suggesting that Donald Trump isn't a threat to democracy? That's interesting, because if Trump were the authoritarian dictator some fear, you'd expect him to shut down shows, silence critics, and jail people who speak out, essentially running the country like North Korea. That's the narrative many on the left, including shows like The View, seem to believe, that if Trump gets back into power, dissent will be crushed and freedom of speech will disappear. If Maher is now questioning whether Trump is actually that dangerous, it could put him at odds with the more hardline voices on the left. He might even face backlash from the woke crowd, since doubting the official stance that Trump is an existential threat to democracy is considered taboo in those circles. What's your take on this? And how do you feel about Dr. Phil stepping into what many might call enemy territory on Club Random, taking on Maher, and dismantling the usual woke talking points. Let me know in the comments who you think came out on top in this Dr. Phil versus Bill Maher exchange. I'd love to hear your thoughts.